Okay, so our topic is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And let's just run through some quick uh, upfront material uh, definitions and things like that. So uh, again, eigenvalues are only defined for square matrices. So when we say uh, that we're interested in the eigenvalues of A, we're assuming that uh, A is a square matrix. matrix. And when we're thinking about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we make the analogy from linear algebra to calculus. So in calculus, we have functions, and we put x into a function, and we get f of x out, right? So that's sort of the calculus model. f of x is a function, x is the input, and f of x comes out. f is the function, I guess, right? f is the function. x is the input, f of x is the output. That's what we get out. Okay, so in, in linear algebra, we have a matrix A, and so we can think of A like a multidimensional function. So our matrix A like a multi-dimensional function. And now uh, we put in a vector x. So our input is x the vector. And what we get out is a times x And if x is an eigenvector of a, then x will be parallel, then ax will be parallel to x. And that's our definition for an eigenvector. Vectors such that Ax is parallel to the original vector x. And when we say parallel, what we mean is that Ax is some scalar multiple of x. And so that's how we get to the equation Ax is equal to lambda x. In other words, A times x is the same as some scalar lambda times x. And now lambda can be negative, which would allow the vector to point in the opposite direction. Um, but it's going to be along the line that contains the original vector. There'll be no rotation of the vector. Of course, we call lambda the eigenvector. Okay, and let's first consider a case where lambda equals zero. Then we have the equation ax is equal to lambda x which is equal to 0 times x. So this gives us the equation ax equals 0. So the x's here are the ones that are in the null space of A. So if we have a zero eigenvalue, then the eigenvectors associated with that zero eigenvalue will be the ones in null space. Now, in our equation, ax equal to lambda x, we have, if a is n by n, 
then x is n by 1. So we have n unknowns from x. And we have one more, which is lambda. So we have n plus 1 unknowns, while we have n equations. And this is why we can't just use elimination uh, to solve the eigenvalue problem. However, if we take the equation ax equal to lambda x, and I'm going to, without really changing the equation, insert an identity matrix here, and then I can move the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And now I can factor out the x. And then if we look at this equation, what we have here, this is a matrix. And if we assume that there are eigenvectors, that is that there are x's that are non-zero, then this matrix must be singular. So we isolate lambda. Since this matrix is singular, its determinant must be 0. So now we can get the x out of the equation, and we can write the equation the determinant of a minus lambda i equals 0. We solve for lambda. And then we can come back to our original equation, ax minus lambda i, or a minus lambda i x equals 0. We plug in lambda. And now we have n equations, n unknowns. We can solve for x. And so that's how we solve the problem. So if we consider a very general matrix, a general 2 by 2, so suppose A looks like this, then if I want to do the determinant of A minus lambda i, That looks like this. Of course, we're going to set this equal to 0. So now when I take this determinant, I get a minus lambda times d minus lambda minus bc equals 0. And this is going to give me, if I just multiply everything through, it's going to give me lambda squared. So I have a lambda squared term. I'm going to have a lambda term. So I have minus d lambda minus a lambda. So it's going to be And then I'm going to have a term AD and a term BC, AD minus BC, equals 0. So you can see that we what we get is a polynomial in lambda. And our job then is to find the roots of that polynomial. This will have, in this case, since it's a second-order polynomial, 
in general, two solutions. We'll call them lambda 1 and lambda 2. And these are the eigenvalues. One of the things to notice for a 2 by 2 is that we can write the equation in terms of um, in terms of its factors. So we know that we would factor we would, we would factor this equation so that, for example, if we get if we took lambda minus lambda 1 lambda minus lambda 2 and we set that equal to 0, we would get lambda squared minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 1 lambda 2 equals 0. And one thing to notice here is that lambda 1 plus, so if we look at these equations and we relate the like terms, we'll find that lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is equal to a plus d. which is equal to the trace of A. Now this is only true for a 2 by 2. This falls apart when uh, if we go higher than a, a 2 by 2. But it's good to know for a 2 by 2. And lambda 1 times lambda 2 is equal to AD minus BC, which is equal to the determinant of A. By the way, the trace of A is equal to the sum of the components on the main diagonal. So if we look at our original matrix, A and D are on the main diagonal, so A plus D is the trace. So we can quickly find the characteristic equation for a 2 by 2 by writing so for a 2 by 2 the characteristic equation is lambda squared minus trace A plus the determinant of A and we set that equal to 0. So let's think about some situations here that we uh, may already know about and consider uh, the eigenvalue problem in light of them. So one thing that uh, we should know about are projection matrices. Remember, a projection matrix takes any vector and projects it into the column space of some uh, uh, projects into its column space. So um, this this comes into play, of course, when uh, we're doing something like linear least squares or Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, where we're taking projections. So if we have a projection matrix P, and let's consider, let's try and do this in three dimensions if we can. So we've got some two-dimensional space here, and we've got some vector B, but then, and, and P is the projection matrix for this plane, for this space. So if I multiply PB, I'm going to project B into that space. So this is where PB would live uh, in that plane. PB is in the plane. 
So the question is, is B an eigenvector? And the answer is clearly no, because uh, PD points in a different direction than B. But what happens if I multiply P times PB? Well, since PB is already in the plane, nothing happens. And so if we think about what vectors are eigenvectors here, Well, any vector that's in the plane is unchanged by P. If it's unchanged, its direction doesn't change. And if its direction doesn't change, then it's an eigenvector. So any vector in the plane is unchanged by PB or by P. So it is an eigenvector. And the eigenvalue, well, since it's unchanged, the eigenvalue would be 1. So for a projection matrix, the eigenvalue equation looks like this. Px equals x, or we could say Px equals 1 times x, where 1 is the eigenvalue. There's another vector that's perpendicular to the plane, and that would be the zero vector. So the other equation that we would have is Px equals zero x. So the other eigenvector is zero, or value. The other eigenvalue is zero. So we have lambda 1 would equal 1 and lambda 2 would equal 0, and this would be true for any 2 by 2 projection matrix. Another type of matrix that we know about is a permutation matrix. So here's an example of a permutation matrix. This matrix permutes x1 and x2 uh, in the equation Ax. So if we just think about what it does, for example, right, if I just 0, 1, 1, 0 times AB, I get BA. It's just permuting them. It's switching them. So if A and B were the same, for example, suppose uh, X is equal to 1, 1, then AX is also equal to 1, 1. And so this is an eigenvector because it didn't change direction. In fact, it didn't change at all. And since it didn't change at all, the eigenvalue lambda would be equal to 1. But we can find another one. So for example, suppose x is equal to 1 and minus 1. Then if I do ax, I get minus 1 and 1. These are on the same line, but the eigenvalue now is equal to minus 1. A 
Okay. So I want to do a couple example problems. Some two by two uh, example problems so that we can look at the process for solving them, some of the things that can happen when we, when we do solve them. So for our first example, let's try this A, a matrix. The first step that we're going to take is to find uh, the eigenvalues. We find the eigenvalues by setting the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. Okay, so for this matrix, we have the determinant of A, which is 2, 2, 5, and negative 1, minus lambda times the 2 by 2 identity, and we're setting that equal to 0. This is equal to the determinant our A matrix minus the matrix lambda, 0, 0, and lambda. And that is going to be set equal to 0. This is equal to the determinant of 2 minus lambda, 2, 5, and minus 1 minus lambda. And now if I take this determinant, that is equal to 2 minus lambda times minus 1 minus lambda minus 10. And that is going to be equal to 0. And now when I multiply through, I get lambda squared minus lambda minus 12 is equal to zero. And so this is uh, quadratic in lambda. And I can solve this. And when I do, I find I get two distinct values for lambda. Lambda 1 is going to be minus 3, and lambda 2 is equal to 4. Okay, so we have two distinct uh, eigenvalues. And now we can go ahead and find the, an associated eigenvector for each one of them. So let's start with lambda 1. For lambda 1 equal to minus 3, we want to uh, set up the equation ax uh, equals lambda x. So here we have a, let's write this down over here, ax equals lambda x. This is what we're solving. Okay, so my a matrix again is 2, 2, 5, and minus 1 times x is equal to minus 3 times x. And I just need to find uh, x, solve the x's. So we can, we set, we set these equal. Let's just multiply the, the negative 3 through. So we get 2 and 2, 5 
and minus 1, x1, x2 is equal to minus 3x1 and minus 3x2. There's my equation. And so I get 2x1 plus 2x2 and 5x1 minus x2 is equal to negative 3x1, negative 3x2, and when I solve, now I've got two equations, two unknowns, very straightforward. Uh, if I set the if I set the equations equal to one another, I end up with 5x1 is equal to minus 2x2, um, or x1 is equal to negative 2 fifths x2. So I could, this is one way that I could look at the answer. The other thing that I could do is, so let's look at it, just a, a, a whole other way to look at this instead of using this equation ax equals lambda x, we can kind of look at it as ax minus lambda x equals zero. And if I factor the x out of this, let's put an i in here, I get a minus lambda i x equals zero. And now this is a null space equation. So really I'm looking for the null space of this matrix. So if I do A minus lambda I, I have two, two, five, and minus one, minus, minus three, zero, zero, minus three, this whole thing times x equal to zero. And so here I get two minus minus three, which is five. And I get two minus zero is two. And then I get five minus zero is five. And I get negative one minus negative three, which is two. x1, x2 equals zero. And now there's two ways I can think about this. I can solve this with elimination, but really we know that we're just looking for the null space of this matrix. So if I take this matrix and put it into reduced row echelon form, so I start off with 5, 2, I do my elimination, I get 0, 0. Here's my pivot. And then I divide this by 5 to get it into reduced row echelon form, making my pivot one. So then we look at this reduced row echelon form in this, these are rows of zeros. This is my identity. And this is f. So I just do minus f over i. Which would be negative 2 fifths and 1. And so we know that this is an eigenvector. Okay. One other way we could have done it. If I just take this. whole thing notice why I did it again so I have five two five two x1, x2 equals 0, 0. So a third 
option here is I just write these equations, 5x1, well, I, I'll do elimination. So, of course, I get 5, 2, and 0, right, my augmented matrix, and then I get 0, 0, and 0. So this tells me that 5x1 plus 2x2 has to equal 0, and then I can make an assumption about my free variable, x2. So I can say, okay, let, uh, let x2 equal, uh, I don't know what makes this easy. If we let x2 equal 5, then I have 5x1 plus 10 is equal to 0. So x1 would be equal to minus 2. And I get an eigenvector minus 2 and 5. Which is that what I got up here? Well, I got so I got a multiple of that up here, right? Remember that there's an infinite number of eigenvectors. Um, we're just looking for a, a basis for the space that the eigenvectors occupy, which of course is the null space of, of A minus lambda I. Now, at this point, we've only dealt with, dealt with the first eigenvalue, which was lambda 1 equal to minus 3. The other one is lambda 2 is equal to 4, so let's deal with that one. My original A matrix... is 2, 2, 5, and negative 1. So the, the method that I prefer is doing uh, a minus lambda i x equals 0 and uh, either solving or finding the null space. So a minus lambda i in this case is equal to 2, 2, 5, and negative 1 minus 4, 0, 0, 4, right, this is A, and this is lambda I here. So this is equal to, so 2 minus 4 is minus 2, 2 minus 0 is 2, 5 minus 0 is 5, and negative 1 minus minus negative, uh, minus 4 is negative 5. One thing to notice is that this matrix A minus lambda I always has to be singular. And in this case, obviously it is. Okay, so all I really need to do at this point is find the null space of this matrix and uh, any vector from the null space of this matrix gives me my my uh, next eigen eigenvector. So I can put it into reduced row echelon form. If I do, so I know I'm going to get a row of zeros on the bottom, but I'll figure out what the uh, the elimination step has to be. So for example, we could use the elimination step. Row 2 uh, goes to uh, 2 row 2 plus 5 row 1. That's going to give me negative 2, 2, 0, 0. To finish off getting it into reduced row echelon form, I divide the top row by negative 2. And I get 1 and negative 1 and 0, 0. So again, Remembering the form for the reduced row echelon form, these are rows of zeros. This is the identity. So that means that this must be F. So minus F over I is equal to 1, 0. So 
So my complete answer here would be lambda one, I've forgotten. Lambda one was negative three, and the eigenvector, so we'll use this negative two fifths one. So we have lambda one equal to negative three, and V one was negative two fifths and one, and then lambda two was equal to four, and V two was equal to one zero. And so that is the, our complete answer to the problem. So the, the basic process, first, find the characteristic equation by doing the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero. Then uh, solve that for lambda to get the eigenvalues. And then take each eigenvalue one by one, plug them into the equation a minus lambda i x equals zero and solve for x to get an eigenvector for each of the eigenvalues. Okay. I want to look at another example. I want to stick with uh, two by twos for now and just show a couple other examples of things that can happen when you're solving the two by two eigenvalue problem. So for this one, we'll choose a matrix. A is equal to one, two, negative two, one. And we want to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Okay, so this is a two by two. So we can use the idea, if we want, that the characteristic equation is equal to lambda squared minus trace a plus the determinant of a or we can um, we can do the determinant of a minus lambda i so if we do this kind of shortcut method that again only works for a two by two we can do it by inspection we get lambda squared minus trace a well the trace here is 1 plus 1, which is 2, so minus 2 lambda, uh, plus the determinant of A. If I take the determinant of this matrix, I get 5 equal to 0. And if I do it this way, let's just show that we get the same answer. So here I'm going to do the determinant of A minus lambda I, so I would get 1 minus lambda, 2 minus 2, 1 minus lambda, set that equal to 0, so this gives me 1 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda. This product is negative 4, but I'm subtracting that product, so I get plus 4 is equal to 0. Okay, so I get a lambda squared. I get negative 1 lambda and negative 1 lambda, so that gives me minus 2 lambda. And I get 1 times 1 is 1, plus 4 is 5, is equal to 0. And we can see that these two methods give us the, uh, the same result as we would expect. Okay, so now we have this characteristic equation. We need to solve it. We need to find the roots. And it happens that the roots of this characteristic equation are imaginary. So if you were to solve this equation, you would find that you have uh, lambda, let's just do this, let's say lambda is equal to 1 plus or minus 2i. So we have a complex conjugate pair of, uh, of eigenvalues, and 
it may seem a little bit confusing at first, but we just do the exact same process. We'll find that it's actually just as simple. So let's choose one. We will do, uh, the first one we'll do is one plus two i. So we're going to put that into the, uh, into the equation. A minus lambda i x equals zero. My A matrix again is one, two, negative two, one. Minus one plus two i times i. This whole thing, x1, x2 equals zero. This is what I'm solving. First, we'll work on this inside part. So this reduces to one, two, minus two, and one, minus, so I have one plus two i, uh, sorry, yeah, I think that was right. I have one plus two i, zero, zero, and one plus two i, x1, x2, equal to the zero vector. Okay, so now I can do the arithmetic part. So I get one minus one plus two i. That's going to give me minus two i. And then I have two minus zero is two. And then I have negative two minus zero is negative two. And I have 1 minus 1 plus 2i, which is minus 2i. x1, x2 is equal to the 0 vector. Okay. So now I want to solve this. Now, again, I know that this matrix is singular. So there's a couple ways to think about this. One way to think about it is I know I even though there, there appears to be two equations, I really only have one equation because the matrix is singular. So one way to think about this is let's just solve the equation minus 2i x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 0. And now we just need to think for a minute about how to solve this equation. Uh, x2 is our free variable, so we make an assumption about x2. And if I were to just let x2 equal i, then my equation would be minus 2i x1 plus 2i equals 0. And this tells me that x1 is equal to 1. So for the eigenvalue, lambda 1 equal to 1 plus 2i, the eigenvector is equal to 1 and i. And now, as it turns out, we already know that these, that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are a complex conjugate pair. So this is 1 minus 2i. And it turns out that the eigenvectors will also be complex conjugate pairs. So I know already that this one will be 1 and minus i. And I'm done. Okay, so that's uh, the kind of the second thing that can happen with a two by two. The first one was two real distinct eigenvalues. The second case that we've looked at is a complex conjugate pair of eigenvalues. Let's look at, at a third case. So let's take an A matrix 4 minus 2, 8 minus 4, 
And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to uh, find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And this is going to be a bit of a special case in a couple different ways. So if we look at the trace, the trace of A is 0. And it's also pretty easy to notice that this is singular. So we can see that the determinant of A is going to equal to 0. So we're left with the characteristic equation lambda squared is equal to 0. We can, we can do that the more traditional way. So if I do determinant of a minus lambda i, I'll get the determinant 4 minus lambda minus 2, 8, and minus 4 minus lambda. This is... 4 minus lambda times minus 4 minus lambda uh, minus 6 uh, minus negative 16 so plus 16 is equal to 0 so here I get negative 16 I get a lambda squared and I get a positive 4 lambda and a negative 4 lambda, and then I've got the 16 from here. And you can quickly see that this just reduces to lambda squared is equal to 0. Okay, so that's our characteristic equation. So obviously, lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, they're both equal to 0. So this is a case where we've got a repeated root. The other thing to notice about, and we've got a 0, our, our eigenvalue is 0. So let's first talk about the idea that the eigenvalue is 0. When the eigenvalue is 0, then so let's say if the eigenvalue is 0. If lambda is equal to 0, then a minus lambda i is equal to a. And of course, we know that this has to be singular. So we would expect we would only get an eigenvalue of 0 if a is singular, which in this case we've already seen that it is. Okay. So that's just uh, sort of an aside. Let's work through the rest of the problem. So a minus lambda i x equal to 0 is going to be 4 minus 2, 8 minus 4. This whole thing goes to 0. So x1, x2 is equal to 0, 0. So we're really just looking for a vector in the null space of A. Since A is singular, we have a 0 eigen, eigenvalue. And uh, once again, we really only have one equation here because we know this is singular. So we can just simply solve 4x1 minus 2x2 is equal to 0. x2 is my free variable. Uh, let's let x2 equal 2. Then that tells us that x1 is going to equal 1. So for lambda 1 equal to 0, my eigenvector x is equal to 1, 2. Now here's the thing with this repeated uh, eigenvalue is that I can't get another independent eigenvector. So I'm stuck at this point. I've only got one eigenvector for my repeated root eigenvalues. Okay, so that's uh, three examples of a 2 by 2 um, eigenvalue problem uh, for the three different cases that we can have when, uh, you know, one with the real distinct roots, one with the complex conjugate roots, and one with the uh, repeated real root.